Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are having a great day, and in this update there is a new enemy, the start of making puzzles, and I've also worked on making the code cleaner with more handlers. Let's dive into it. Before I get into the video, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you enjoy these type of videos. It will really help out the channel. Thank you. I started working where I left off in the last video. When a new project was fired, a new one was created, which is not really ideal here. And the solution was to take the inactive projectiles that had already been created and reuse them. All it does, it resets them and gives them a new position and direction. It was a quick and easy solution to save some memory. Next up was adding a new enemy to the game, but before I could do that I needed art for it. Since I'm not good at making it, I had to find something that was already made. I searched and I found this skeleton. Link to the artist is in the description below of this video. This sprite pack got attack, patrolling and dying animations. It's perfect for my project. It also has some other animations that I don't think I will be using, but it's nice to have them if I do need them later on. Right out of the box I couldn't use them though. The sprites were different sizes and I need them all to be the same size. So I went into GIMP and started working on making them all 64 by 64 and also centering them, as well as placing them on the same sprite atlas. This took some time because I'm not really used to editing sprites, but it worked out great in the end. And most of the work was already done, I just had to cut them up into individual sprites and move them around a bit. I had some issues when I was about to add the skeleton into the game however. There was only one enemy prior to this and I never made it easy to add new types of enemies. So I had to create an enemy handler and also change some code to make it more scalable. Everything that is done to the enemies are dealt with inside this new handler. Drawing, updating and behaviors. It's much easier now to see and also troubleshoot the code when things don't go according to the plan or some new bug comes up. After the skeleton was added, I worked on cleaning up the enemy handler class. When I'm adding new things into the game, I tend to make a mess out of it until it works. Then I go back and remove all unnecessary code. I am happy with the skeleton, it moves nice and the hitboxes all work great. I guess more bugs and errors will appear later on and I will deal with them then. What did take a long time, not only to figure out, but also how to even go about to do it, was the puzzle. There were two options that I saw how I could do them. One, the best option would have been to make a new tab in the editor and create all puzzles there and then add them into the game. This approach would be very time consuming and also very difficult. I would have added all sorts of functions to my editor to even make the most basic puzzle work in the game. And since I'm not developing any large game and I'm also the only one coding, I went with the other option which is hard coding it. It's not really ideal to do it, but it allows me to do the puzzles right away and I do not have to create such a large new part of the editor before I could even begin. And all the puzzles will most likely be different anyways. I added a very basic puzzle handler to create puzzles of different types. And inside this handler it checks every update, the player position and the status. Depending on the level, there is a different events to be started when the player is in a certain position, clicks, kills or destroys something. I started out by making a very basic button that can be clicked. The button needed to be shown when the player was close to a certain lever. But the first problem I ran into was the user interface buttons. They are not accessible to the puzzle handler. So before I could do any puzzles, I had to make a user interface handler to deal with all the buttons in the game. This was already planned, but it needed to be done a bit sooner than I had thought. This was a rather quick change in the code. All I did was copy paste it and add some parameters to the new update calls. Now the temporary button is always hidden unless there's a reason for it to be shown. And once it's pressed, it calls an update in the puzzle handler. So the level right here can be pulled. And over here we have the bridge that you cannot jump over or move across because the gap is too large. So when the player pulls the lever, a walkway gets added onto the bridge. This is a very simple puzzle if you even want to call it puzzle, but it demonstrates the basics of the puzzle handler. I'm not sure I will keep this look on the button, however the basic function of the puzzle handler is implemented and that is all I wanted to do here. I even managed to add some animation to the lever when it's being pulled. The last thing I did was to change how the player jumped. I was looking at some other videos how to make the jumping feel and look a bit better. 
One thing that stood out was that the player can choose the height of the jump by simply holding the jump button for some amount of time. The longer you hold the button, the higher you will jump. Right now, the jump difference is not very large from a quick press to a long hold and I will add more control here later on and play around with the gravity and speed values. That's all for this week's update folks and I hope you enjoyed it or found it interesting and that I get to see you in the next one as well. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you enjoy these type of videos, it really helps out the channel. Until then, take care and have a great day. Bye.